Welcome back. In the last class, we have uh, seen uh, space time uh, in the context of uh, uh, classical mechanics or uh, Newtonian mechanics. Now, slowly we make a transition to special theory of relativity or idea of uh, space time with the basic postulates of uh, special theory as a uh, speed of light in the vacuum being maximum attainable speed for uh, anything. So it was in year 1905, Einstein uh, introduced uh, or formulated the special theory of relativity and uh, we'll see some of the basic postulate uh, and uh, get into it uh, step by step. So today's uh, lecture is uh, going to be on the speed of light and the concept of uh, light cone. So this is a part of course uh, PH4205 at uh, IASER uh, Calcutta. So let's uh, look at the uh, law of uh, velocity addition in an inertial frame within the Newtonian uh, mechanics. Let's say O1 and O2 be the two inertial frame. Let O2 be moving uh, with the velocity v with respect to O1. It's a relative velocity. So we can uh, assume that the O1 is at rest and uh, O2 is uh, moving with the relative velocity v in some arbitrary direction. If we have a particle with the velocity u2 in the frame O2 and uh, u1 on the frame uh, O1, then we know from uh, simple Newton's law that the velocity u1 is given by u2 plus uh, v. Let's see it uh, more picturally. Let's say that uh, you have a frame O1, we assume to be rest and we have a frame uh, O2 which is uh, moving with the velocity v in uh, some arbitrary direction. We have a particle which is moving at the speed of u2 on the frame uh, O2 and the velocity of uh, that particle as observed by the frame uh, O1 is given by u1 which is uh, u2 plus v. This is how the velocity addition happens uh, within the two inertial observer in the Newtonian uh, mechanics. Let's uh, uh, do an interesting experiment uh, in which uh, we have a frame uh, O1 and O2. It's actually moving but it is frozen otherwise uh, uh, we'll have to keep running around. Let's say we have an observer in the frame uh, O1 and she is shooting a laser gun in some arbitrary direction. Let this uh, propagation of uh, laser light is uh, also observed by an observer in the frame uh, O2 and uh, as per Newton's uh, uh, law of velocity addition is correct, the velocity observed by observer O2 is uh, given by C minus uh, V. Now let's uh, have an, another uh, observer who is uh, shooting a laser back at the frame O1 and which is seen by an observer in the frame uh, O1 and then you will see that the velocity of uh, that uh, laser beam is uh, seen by the observer at O1 is given by C plus uh, V where the V is a uh, speed of the uh, frame O2 with respect to O1. So this is uh, what would uh, happen as per the Newton's uh, law of uh, velocity addition or uh, laws of uh, inertial transformation. The Michelson was a pioneer in measuring the speed of light and he want to verify the fact that the velocity of light is the uh, same or different in the different direction. His motivation was slightly different. At that time uh, light was believed to be electromagnetic waves uh, propagating as a wave through the medium called ether and uh, if the medium is uh, omnipresent and uh, when the earth is moving in the medium and its uh, relative velocity should be affecting the velocity of light. So Michelson wanted to verify this and uh, Michelson with the help of uh, michelson more experiment wanted to show that the velocity of uh, light uh, depends on the propagation of a direct outcome is a somewhat known as a null result where he could not uh, get any difference in the velocity of light in any direction. So his idea was to the Michelson interferometer I believe you all know works on the simple fact of uh, interference of light. Here uh, light is made to go through 
uh, a beam splitter which splits the beam into two parts and made to reflected by a mirror and bounce back to the same uh, spot uh, through the beam splitter into a place where you observe. So these two act uh, as an independent sources and interfere at this point. If the velocity of light is different in this direction and this direction, then uh, you would uh, see a displacement in the fringe. Or even better, then uh, rotate it and uh, see if there is any fringe shift because of a change in the direction. In the Michelson uh, experiment is a fairly sophisticated experiment. Uh, uh, he had uh, set up all this very large optical bench, which was uh, set on the mercury bed because it provides the stability to carefully observe the fringe shift and then uh, he is able to rotate it in uh, whichever angle the floating uh, interferometer in the mercury and uh, uh, if the story is true the Morley is a uh, chemist who provide the mercury because a large amount of uh, mercury was needed to suspend the interferometer. So this is the experiment uh, by which uh, it was uh, uh, shown that the velocity of uh, light is uh, not affected by the propagation of uh, earth or the concept of uh, ether was uh, seriously questioned. However, uh, it led to basic uh, postulates of uh, special theory of relativity. It was uh, believed uh, that the Einstein uh, solely uh, made special theory of uh, relativity based on the theoretical concept of invariance of uh, Maxwell's equation which led to the construction of postulates called the velocity of light is same uh, and the maximum possible speed. Even he seems to have claimed that uh, he was not aware of the about this uh, Michelson Morley experiment and in the later it was suggested that uh, it is not exactly true he was uh, very well aware of the Michelson Morley experiment and somehow did not want to give credit to Michelson. Einstein came up with the basic postulate of uh, special theory of light is that the speed of light is the same in all inertial frames. So this is a postulate which has been verified by a series of experiment uh, even before formulating this uh, special theory of relativity Michelson Morley experiment is the one which uh, gave this uh, conclusion. In addition to this the postulate also says that the velocity of light is independent of velocity of emitter or the observer. So it just doesn't depend on anything. It is just a universal constant and also no signal or nothing can move faster than the speed of light. That means these two observer should not be seeing the velocity of light as a uh, different means when you shoot around the laser at each other from different inertial frame moving with respect to each other the finally observed and emitted velocity of light should be same. However, the Galilean transformation or the invariance of uh, inertial frame says that the velocity should change. So one of the way this can happen is that uh, if the observer O1 and O2 do not follow the same clock that means uh, O1 has a different clock than O2 clock. His speed and time is adjusted uh, such that the velocity of light is the uh, same in uh, both uh, frame or both observer would uh, see the velocity of light as a C. So this is the basic idea of uh, relative time concept which comes from the velocity of light being same for all inertial observer. Now fixing the speed of light or making it a universal constant, we have uh, lost uh, another global concept which is a uh, global time. Now the time depends on the observer in a such a way that the velocity of uh, light is preserved for all the inertial frames. Let us uh, look at the more uh, into this and this uh, led to the idea of uh, uh, space time. The Minkowski first uh, developed the idea of uh, space time. Here, each inertial frame is uh, represented uh, by space time and not just space or not just time because uh, each of them have uh, their own uh, clock and their own coordinate system. Then you can combine the space and time and geometrically give it dynamical degree of freedom. Entire your uh, dynamics depends on the space time and the time also evolves 
in a specific manner and that is the idea was uh, developed by uh, Minkowski. Earlier to Minkowski, the space-time or uh, Einstein special theory of uh, relativity he was introduced with the time coming with the complex quantity i and then they adjusted such that the velocity of light remains same in all the coordinate system through the Lorentz transformation. However, this uh, brilliant idea of combining space and time into a single entity of uh, space-time has led to a lot of development, especially the whole development of uh, general theory of relativity is centered around this concept. Here each uh, point in the space-time is called the events and uh, they are represented by both the time as well as space. Now it is a four-dimensional uh, space-time. You usually represent a time as a first coordinate. Then you have a spatial coordinate x, y, z. Another event is uh, represented by a t2 a time, x2, x, y2, y3. That is their spatial coordinates and uh, time coordinates. So, in a, geometrically, we have a space. In this case, I am taking a two dimension as a space. Usually, simple space time diagram takes a one dimension as a space and a one dimension as a time. Here, uh, because of the modern drawing capabilities, we could make it a little more uh, visual by taking a two dimensional space and a one time. In principle, you should have a four dimension, three space and one time. However, it is uh, not possible currently to make diagram with that. So each uh, point here represent an event which has a time and the spatial coordinate t and x1 and uh, x2. Then the another event has a time t2, x2, y2 and uh, so on. We call the distance uh, between this space time between these two events is called the space time interval, and that is given by the quantity ds square is equal to c into dt square minus dx square minus dy square minus uh, dz square, where dt is a uh, t2 minus t1, dx is a uh, x2 minus 1, and so on. So, this is a uh, Again, a brilliant concept introduced by this, uh, the complex time which is introduced in the Lorentz transformation, it turns out that it is unnecessary, time alone never comes into picture, it is always comes with the square of it and that turns out to be minus 1. So, including this, if you, you have a normal Euclidean distance, uh, which is replaced by what we call now is a Minkowskian uh, uh, displacement that means the distance now referred with the positive for the time and the negative for the spatial uh, components and then this uh, quadratic function would represent the distance. Unlike uh, our regular Euclidean distance which is positive definite here there are possibility of uh, having the uh, positive and uh, negative value including the zero. So, this actually incorporate the speed of light because you can set uh, speed of light is a propagation along which uh, ds square is 0. That is what I said about the difference between the Euclidean concept of distance and the Minkowskian concept of distance. It is not a positive definite. You can have a 0 and the 0 represented by the propagation of light. You can put there c is there speed of light c square and you can put d square is equal to 0, then you would get that uh, dx by dt equal to dx square by dt square is a uh, velocity of light. So, this uh, geometrically incorporate the speed of light. The fact that nothing can move faster than the light divide the space-time event into three categories, the time-like separated, light-like separated and space-like separated. And this is essentially is a, what I was talking about the distance between or the separation between the two events. This led to the structure of light cone which plays an important uh, role both in the special theory of and general theory of relativity. For an observer all the event can be classified into three types that we have already said. Let us make it more concrete. Let an event A be given by the coordinate t1, x1, y1 and z1 and the event b 
is given by t2 x2 y2 and z2 the space time interval is uh, given by ds square is equal to c square dt square minus dx square minus dy square and minus dz square the first type is a uh, time like if two event a and b are uh, time like separated if the space time interval ds square is greater than zero these events can exchange signal with the massive or light particle so that is what you call is a time like separated event they can uh, communicate uh, with the, each other very easily now comes the light like or null events uh, if two events are called light like or null if the space time interval between them d square is zero and that means that uh, they can uh, communicate only through the light and nothing else so only light separated are uh, along the trajectory of uh, light and that is why we call them the light like uh, trajectory and the last time is a space uh, like a, a separated event if two events are uh, space like separated then we have a space time uh, interval between them d square is uh, less than zero and uh, these two events cannot exchange any meaningful signal and we often don't talk about the space like event now here is a brief uh, representation of uh, what we call is a light cone uh, we have uh, here observer is at uh, o and uh, uh, with respect to this observer we are uh, classifying the all the event let us assume that the observer at o is uh, emitting the uh, light pulses at a regular interval this uh, light pulses means that uh, along the trajectory of light you will have all the null separated uh, points from the observer uh, at o so that is uh, what we call the light cone the wave front which is coming would be spherical however we are handling only two dimensional that is a two dimensional cut of that would be circle and that circle would be expanding at the speed of light and as we accumulate all this circle along the trajectory and we would get the light cone so this is what is a null like or the light like uh, surface which uh, uh, separates or uh, which is a boundary between the time like events and the space like event all the things inside this light cones are a time like event and uh, outside this are the space like event observer at uh, o cannot communicate with the events which are outside the light cone they are causally disconnected however for all the observer inside the light cone you can send it either by the time like trajectory or you can send in the light to communicate with them you can have an accelerated uh, particles or uh, uh, straight line connecting between the observer inside the light cone this is called the future light cone because observer at o can communicate uh, with the in the future whatever signal uh, this person sends would be uh, reaching in the future there is another counterpart to this that is the past light cone that is uh, from the past wherever the signal is emitted would be reaching the observer at uh, o and again from the observer's perspective the t is equal to zero plane except uh, observer himself is a space like he cannot have any communication but in the negative time direction he can uh, get the signal from the past only for this uh, past light cone which is called past light cone and the uh, longer the time uh, uh, it becomes uh, the light cone expand and you can have more and more signal or far uh, distance uh, observer that is how uh, you have a light cone forming a fundamental entity which divides the space time into future time like past time like and uh, null future null and past null and the space like event the speed of flight and the space time as per uh, Einstein's uh, postulate the speed of light in the vacuum is a universal constant and nothing can move faster than the uh, speed of uh, light so that has been one of the fundamental postulates and it is the uh, same for all inertial observer since it is a universal constant uh, one can uh, 
Since the speed of light is a universal constant, one can develop a complete uh, system of physical unit assuming the speed of light is a uh, one. So this is uh, uh, natural to the uh, theory of relativity. Uh, since it is a universal constant, you might as well uh, set it to one. Now, speed of light is a velocity, so it has a dimension of uh, length by time. If we set that equal to one, then we have both uh, length and time have a same physical dimension and that is what is done mostly in the theory of relativity both time and space is measured in terms of uh, seconds so that is a usual convention that you use uh, time as a measurement for the distance uh, also otherwise also one can use a centimeter to measure the time for example as per the current uh, international standard of units one meter is a distance traveled by the light uh, in one by c seconds where c is uh, 2.9979 meter per second so this is a new concept where you use the light to measure the spatial distance also it comes from the fact that uh, you use a universal constant and you can uh, use it to define the unit so essentially you have a meter scale and you have a light source and you uh, have a clock or a stopwatch which you start uh, and then emit the light and then see how much time it takes to reach it to one meter and that would be the distance in the units of time in the space-time unit, it is given like this. You have a first observer, second observer. The distance between them is assumed to be one meter. But uh, then you start your uh, time and then light propagates. And then you, you know, reach the other end, you stop. And that would be t is equal to 3.3356409519852 nanoseconds. Of course, uh, this is uh, a simplistic view of uh, how the distance can be measured. Actually, there are complications here which uh, may not cause much difficulty in the Euclidean or uh, Minkowski space. Otherwise, it would uh, cause considerable problem here. The idea is this. This and this uses different time. This diagram itself should be in principle wrong because uh, then this guy will have a time t1. This guy will have a time t2 depending on uh, how fast they are moving with respect to each other. If they are zero, then it is all right. And then when he starts its uh, clock and then uh, it uh, reaches here and he should stop here. But how will you know when it reaches that point? That means the person here need to tell, person standing here should tell when it has reached. That means uh, he has to send the signal back again and that would meet somewhere here. So in principle, in uh, relativity, it is only possible to measure the round trip time. The genuine way of doing this experiment is this. You fix a mirror at uh, one meter and then you send a light. Uh, when you start a light pulse on, you start your clock, then let it reflect and come back. And then you see how much uh, time it has taken, then divide that by two and multiply it by c then how you would get the space time distance between the two points however uh, we will discuss that later in the course currently i am trying to impress you is that you have a new physical uh, unit in which you are assuming the velocity of light is constant which is very popular among the relativists uh, just to avoid writing c c c all the time or c square all the time so you have uh, your distance minkowski distance cleanly written as a dt square minus dx square minus dy square minus dz square so here uh, we show the evolution of the light cone when the you start the clock you start sending the light pulse but uh, you take the wave front in this case it is circle and as it propagates, you collect them all and then you get the uh, space, uh, light cone structure. This is how the light cone is constructed. The construction of this light cone is uh, fairly important. Uh, we will study more about that uh, uh, in coming lectures.